Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at a piece of mathematics that is difficult for people. This is something that if you study certain types of math, you will run into this and you might struggle with it. I've seen a lot of people, uh, specifically students in differential equations, struggling with this specific thing. So we have a function here, f of x, and it's equal to this infinite sum. N here goes from zero to infinity, and we have x to the n. And what we're going to do is just take the derivative of this. So let's just do it, and we'll run into the problems when we run into them. So f prime of x, that's the notation we use for the derivative. And I wanna keep this in summation notation. So I'm gonna write the sum. And then here we have n. And this will start at some number which we will determine shortly. That's actually the tricky part is what is the number? What number goes there? So this is infinity. So when you're doing this, I wanna emphasize that when you encounter this in differential equations, this is just a very, very minor part of the problem. You want to be able to do this as quickly and effortlessly as you can and as mechanically as you can. So you want to look at x to the n and you want to say, hey, I can use the power rule. So I'm going to bring down the n and then we have x and then you subtract one from the exponent. So you get n minus one. So now the question is, where do you start? Well, if you put a zero here, you would be wrong. And here's why. If you go back to your original function, which is here, f of x, if you plug in zero, you get x to the zero. And then this symbol means that you add, and then you go to the next number, which is one, and then you add, and then you go to the next number, which is two, and then you add, and then it just goes on forever. So this is really one plus x plus x squared plus dot, dot, dot. So when you take the derivative, the one is gonna go away because one is a constant and the derivative of a constant is zero. So you're gonna start with the first term, not the zeroth term, you see? Because the zeroth term, right, this is the term that corresponds to zero, this is the term that corresponds to one, this is the term that corresponds to two. The zeroth term vanishes, literally, right? One becomes zero, it's gone. So now we have to start this with one. And that's, Pretty simple, you might say, well, I can just memorize it then, right? So whenever I have a zero here and I take a derivative, I just shift up by one. Well, let's take another derivative. And the answer is no, not always. There's summations that we can come up with where this will fail, this trick of just shifting up. Let's do one more and then I'll show you an example where it fails. So say uh, we want the derivative again, right? So in this case, you just shift it up by one, so you're at two. Then here you have infinity, and then you bring this down, so you get n, n minus one, and then x to the n minus two, so you subtract one from that exponent. And you can check uh, how. Well, you come back up here, and you should always check, right? This is how you can decide whether or not you should shift up. You come back up here, and you take this number, and you plug it in. So you get one times x to the one minus one is zero, plus two times x to the two minus one is one, et cetera. So here this first term is one. So when you take its derivative, it vanishes and it's zero. So we shift up and we go to two. So in most of the problems that you encounter in differential equations, when you have to do stuff like this, um, this is the idea. But this comes up in other areas of math, right? Where you have an infinite sum and you're trying to find the derivative of that infinite sum. Let's do another example to show you that this pattern, which we seem to have created, um, does not always work. So say we have f of x, and let's just keep it simple. We don't have to go crazy. We can just take our original example, and let's just start at one. And now we're looking at x to the n again, right? Just keep it simple, right? That's always the best way. And check this out. So f prime of x, well, this is going to be equal to the infinite sum, where n starts at some mystical unknown number. And then here's infinity. And again, we want to be able to just do everything mechanically and quickly and preserve the sums. We don't want to have to write out the sum, right? So again, this is coming up in a place in math where, again, you just want to get through this. This is just a very minor step in a much, much longer problem that might take you 30 to 40 minutes to solve. So you don't want to get hung up on like lots of technicalities here. 
And so now you got to decide, okay, what what is here? Well, let's come back up here. If you plug in the one, you get x to the one, which is x. Uh, I'll put the one there. And then plug in two, you get x squared. Plug in three, you get x cubed, etc. right? And so when you take the derivative, oh, look, the derivative of x is one. The derivative of x squared is two x. Look at that. So we have, we still have that first term there. So we don't shift up. You see, so you don't shift up. Now, if you were to take the derivative again, right, let's just do it one more time, just to make the point. In this case, when you plug in one, is your first term a constant? Yes, it is. So you shift up because that first term will vanish, um, will vanish when you differentiate. And then here we get x to the n minus two because you subtract one from the exponent and you bring down you bring down that n minus one, right? So um, just a really uh, peculiar uh, technique um, that comes up. So if you're wondering where this comes up, this comes up in uh, solving differential equations using power series. And I just thought, let me just make a video on something that people have a hard time with. And I, I don't know, maybe this will help someone because this is something that is always an issue when you're working through those power series solutions. Um, basically, if you're curious, I mean, why not? I'll just show you really quickly. The idea behind these, these problems and how this comes up is you start with, with an infinite series like this right, say n runs from zero to infinity of, um, let's say, c sub n times x to the n. Start with the power series centered at zero. And what you do, here's a really simple example. This one has nice solutions involving sine and cosine. Um, so this, this is a, a really easy problem, really easy differential equation uh, to do. Uh, you can do it really quickly, um, and uh, the answer is actually C1 cosine x plus C2 sine x. You can just do it in your head uh, or using other techniques. But in mathematics, sometimes we like to do things the hard way. So this is a good example for infinite series. So you start with an infinite series, and you plug it in to this DE. And when you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to have to differentiate this. And that's where it comes into play, right? Because you have to differentiate this. So the examples I picked for this video were actually simplified examples, right? There's no, um, the leading coefficient is one here, right? There's a one in front of x to the n, but in the actual problem that you do in differential equations, there's a C sub n there, which makes it even, even more complex. But I actually have a video on YouTube on my channel of solving this differential equation using power series. I'm like 90%, I'm pretty sure I have it uh, because it's such a good good example for people to see how everything just kind of comes together and you end up with sine and cosine in a really beautiful way. Anyways, a uh, random math video just to show you how to differentiate uh, a power series. This is just something that people struggle with. Good luck.